before starting the layout, you need to uh, set some rules. Go to Preferences and choose Preferences. Fill out autosave information. We like to autosave the layout every minute, but you can choose whatever you want. Same for file history size. Here it is nine. It means the nine latest files will be saved. In hotkeys, you can choose shortcuts. This is, a, uh, this is an efficient way to do your layout. You have pre-saved commands, but you can also add new ones. Feel free to browse the display options as well. You can choose among many options, such as grid style, thickness, spacing, etc. Click board setup at the top. In layers, you can custom uh, customize your layer set. By default, you will have two copper layers. And you can see the top copper layer and the bottom copper layer. These are signal layers. You can also change the number of layers. Let's say you need a four-layer PCB. You will now have two inside layers between your top and bottom layers. You can keep them as signal layers and make them uh, power planes as per your stack of requirements. At the top again, you can choose the PCB thickness, also de defined by the stack up. Now, suppose you are using a differential track on the first layer. The reference layer to the layer one should be the ground layer. Because on the differential pair, the ground layer should always be below the differential pairs uh, without breaks. This is to ensure impedance matching of the differential pair is constant over the entire length. This is your stack up. Here we have a four layer stack up. You can, you can go to text and graphics. This is where you can edit the text that will appear on your board. Choose height, width, thickness, and so on. Let's discuss net classes. It's important to go over these design rules. And you can see over here, there are different nets and you can see there's a, a default class available. This defines a particular clearance. A clearance is a minimum distance which needs to be maintained between the two tracks. KiCad will handle that part once you define this minimum clearance. You can also define the minimum track width for a particular net. A net class is a group of nets. So all these nets will be assigned to this net class. And this net class will follow these rules based on minimum values you define for clearance track width via size, via drill, differential pair width, so on and so forth. So if you want to create a new net class, click the plus sign. And for this demo, let's create a net class for uh, a 90 ohm differential pair used for uh, USB. So we've created a new net class. The width of your differential pair will be defined in your stack up along with the spacing. And normally for differential pairs, the clearance is five times the track width. These are the nets present in your circuit and this is the net class. Now imagine you want to assign net BT1-pad1 and net C2-pad1 to some other class. Click default under net class and select class among the ones that are available. If you wanted uh, to assign net BT1-pad1 to the 90 ohm differential pair net class, this net will now follow all the rules assigned for this class. If you have multiple differential classes, each of the differential pairs should follow different track widths or different spacing. You can create multiple classes and find the clearances for each single ended line and differential pair. Now let's go over tracks and vias. In your board, there might be different current levels. If your layer one thickness is one ounce copper, and if, if you want a track to carry one amp current, 
then your track width should be a minimum 40 mils. But there are also milliamp currents flowing through your circuit, so you won't use 40 mil widths for all the nets. You might require different track widths, which you can define in the width column. Here we'll say 10. If you want a 40 mil track, specify 40. Same goes for vias, which allow tracks to travel from one layer to another layer. You can choose your via and drill size. Drill refers to the whole size of your via. Here we will specify 10 for drill and 22 for size and another eight for drill and 20 for size. The unit is always in mils. Let's move on to the solder mask and paste part. You can see solder mask clearance. The solder mask is used to cover the entire board except the pads defined in your footprint. Now, if your pad size has a 10 mil diameter, your solder mask opening could be 14 mils to leave two mils on each side. Basically, the solder mask clearance is the extra space that will not be covered by the solder mask. Before defining the clearance, remember to check your manufacturer's capabilities. Same goes for the solder paste, which is used to assemble components. Now your design rules are set. You can see them at the top of your screen. The unit is mils. If you want to shift uh, to millimeters, click the MM button on the left-hand side. If you want to route tracks, click this button on the right-hand side. Here we've selected nine mils, but if you want another value, click this track drop down and select the one you require. And now this track width is 10 mils. If you want to change the size of the text, go to edit at the top and select edit text and graphic properties. Let's say you wanted to change the size of the footprint references. Click this option, select your layer and define the line thickness here we put 0 0.152 millimeters, which is six mils. Now you can edit the text width, height, and thickness. 0 0.75 millimeters is approximately 30 mils. You can click OK when you're done. At the top, there are grid options. The grid will help you with the accuracy of your design. It is the distance between the two points. While designing, it's a best practice to keep it at five mils. But if needed, you can click edit user grid and define your own values. This circuit has a differential pair. There is a USB connector and there are two tracks running uh, from there, D minus and D plus. And there's another differential pair, D one minus and D one plus. If you want to define a pair as a differential pair, select place net label on the right hand side and click the screen. Whatever name you choose, it has to end with plus and minus or uh, P and N. This is very important for differential pairs. When you start routing, if KiCad notices a D minus, it will search for the D plus and consider these two tracks as differential pairs. Now, if you want to route two differential tracks, click route at the top and you can see the option for single tracks, which is already available on the right hand side. And there's a differential pair option. When we click it, a window pops up and mentions it is unable to find complementary differential pair nets. This is why you need to make sure the labels end with uh, minus and plus or N and P. We will show you how to route a differential net in the next video. We'll also show you how to uh, do the impedance matching of your nets. There are two different differential nets and their lengths should be the same. Under route, there's an option called tune differential pair length. We can show you right now how it works for a single track. Let's select tune track length and then this red track. Uh, a note appears and reads too short. 37.440 millimeters, 
0.000 millimeters, which means that we have set the target length at 100 millimeters. But the actual length of our track is just 37.44 millimeters. This is very important in DDRs, for instance, where you use address lines and data lines. There are eight different address and data lines, and their lengths should be equal. If you want to change your target length, right-click the track and select Length Tuning Setting. As we just saw, the target length is 100 millimeters. We will see what happens when we write 40 millimeters. Meanwhile, don't forget that all these parameters are very important in the differential pairs. We will discuss this in the next video when we cover how to route differential pairs. For now, we'll just show you how the target length can be achieved. So we set the target length to 40 millimeters, and it's still indicating too short, 37.44 millimeters, 40 millimeters. Now, we want to make it 40 millimeters. Place your cursor on the track and move it. You can see a small S-shaped track appearing. This is how you increase the size of your track. And the note now reads, tuned, 40 millimeter, 40 millimeter, which means the length is exactly 40 millimeters.